hello in today's video we are going to learn about orchids now i have some of my smaller younger orchid and my larger one of my larger phalaenopsis orchid i have to practice saying those plant names you know you know what's interesting about orchids is that they're epiphytes too just like air plants they like to have their roots run free they don't like to be suffocated being planted in soil it's funny that they're kind of cousins to bromeliads, but you don't plant them in dirt like you do bromeliads. And some people actually let them run free just like air plants. You have to water them a little bit more often if that happens. So they're suited best for humid, temperate, or cooler environments or homes. I know when I, this is the first year I've grown them myself. And when we get into our upper temperatures in August, September, July, whatever in the summer, you never know what month it's going to be but the upper 80s and 90s i'll probably keep them inside so that they're not so hot outside so let's talk about some tips for growing orchids so you can be successful in your container gardens you don't want to strangle your orchids orchids are like the air plants like i said they want to be free now um, if you plant them in potting soil they'll actually suffocate get root rot and they'll probably die and i'm just going to full disclosure here Orchids are one of your little bit pricier plants. It's in your vested interest and in your, you know, the return on your investment for purchasing this plant that you learn how to grow it correctly and make sure that we take care of it and grow it just like it wants to be grown. I freaked myself out. I thought I might have gotten this one, the bigger white one, too wet, and I kind of looked through and checked the bark, but I didn't have as much sphagnum moss, and it really holds some moisture and she had a nice new little root so that i was able to i felt better about her and i she's just resting in there and we're just gonna let her be so this is a couple of her sisters i love the colors they're just so beautiful and they just bloom and bloom and bloom i've had these probably a month or more and they just keep blooming so um some of the that's the most important thing um what's really cool is this one's getting some new little green roots coming out the top and that's okay with an orchid because like i said they'll grow their roots are going to grow down through the medium that you plant them in or if you keep them hung up or whatever and you know some people hang them from trees some people keep them open i have mine in orchid bark you buy it in a bag and i kind of set some in the bottom of these open baskets these are wooden baskets that allow the air to go through i have mosquito netting in them that holds in the bark so that made it easy to put them in there i made sure when i planted them that i looked for any old brown dead looking roots i trimmed those off with nice clean sterile scissors and just kept anything green and then i threw away anything um i i disposed of anything that they came in from the orchid place and put all new orchid bark so that they could have everything fresh from the beginning when i transplanted them and um sphagnum moss sphagnum moss you can mix a little bit of that in with your orchid bark if you want i had some mixed in with the other white one and i thought it hold, held the moisture for too too much moisture and that can be pro a problem too we'll talk about watering because you don't want to over water you don't want to underwater but if they get too much water just like air plants and if the roots sit in too much water and the sphagnum moss hold a lot of water they will rot and the plants will die so that's really important like i said orchids are like air plants they like to have their roots run free and they like to um just not be constrained around that area now unlike air plants when you water an orchid you're not supposed to just pour water all over the leaves and the stems <laughs> I've been doing that wrong too. Here's my number one tip of the year and probably for the next five years. If you bring a plant and you move and you come into a new plant that you've never grown in an environment you've never lived in, study the tips first. Before you just think you know everything, start taking care of the plants because these tropical orchids and these tropical hybrid plants and some of these more delicate plants, you just don't treat them the same as you did some of those plants you planted in the ground up there in the Midwest. Just a tip from the pro who's just freaked herself out. It's like, okay, it's okay. They're going to be fine. But 
Whew, lesson learned, learn the tips first. So I have poured water on the leaves. Luckily it hasn't damaged what I should do is get a nice warm washcloth, you know, just like you would wash your face, not too hot and gently wipe the leaves off so that there's not water standing on the leaves. And that way you won't have water collecting in the crowns, which can rot them, which is totally interesting. You know, their cousins, the bromeliads, that's what you do to them to water them. You pour the water on the stems and the leaves and the stems have a little cup and they hold the water and you don't even have to technically water the dirt. It just helps hold the roots in there. So that's your lesson is don't treat one plant like another. Make sure you know what each likes and then we'll be more successful with our plants. And I'm sure glad I learned that about my orchids in time. They're thriving and doing well, but I know that I'll have a longer life with them if I learn these tips and take care of them accordingly. Fertilizer, interesting little tip on fertilizer. So I was reading the back of the fertilizer box and followed the directions. As it turns out, the philanop orchids would rather be fertilized less maybe three to four weeks versus every two so I'm going to cut back on the fertilizing schedule too so that I don't over fertilize and once you fertilize then you want to water and flush out some of that let it sit there for a little bit so the roots can absorb it and then you'll flush it out with some clean water we talked about watering so um, one thing too is you just have tap water you're gonna want maybe get you a pitcher and just let that sit there overnight or whatever and it'll get a lot of that hard chlorine out of the water it'll evaporate into the air uh, what i've been fortunate enough to do is i collected rainwater, and i've still been using that on my plants here inside and um, my vegetables outside still have quite a bit of it left and as it, we get different rain i'm going to keep collecting it because the plants actually do better with the natural water so if you can have a small container gardens and one or two orchids, you could probably afford a little bit of a still, distilled water every now and then. I also want to be careful that we don't water with too cold of water. They like a warmer, you know, room temperature type of water. When you do water, you pour the water over the bark or the medium that you have them planted over or over the roots if they're out in the open and air, and that will help them out. You don't want to just soak them in water and um, what I do is I take them outside. I just fill the bark, fill down the dark bark to about the second knuckle. And if it feels dry, I think that they're about ready to water. It's been about once a week. And I take them outside in the grass and I pour the water down over the bark and just soak them that way. And it drains out through the bottom and through the sides of the open basket. And then they dry out and they're not just sitting and soaking in water. And that works really well. If you are putting them in a pot, like a plastic pot that's open and with inside another pot that collects water, make sure that the water after you pour it in there, you drain it out so that they're not just sitting in standing water. Again, you want to avoid that root rot or your plants will not do well. Light. You know, it's interesting about orchids like this. They, the Phalaenopsis do not want a lot of bright sunlight. They don't want to be out in the hot sun. Now, I put them out for a little bit today and into the bright light out in the back on the patio because I want them to get some fresh air and have the air circulate rate lading around them a little bit and get a little bit of sunlight. They can get moisture in their leaves from the air, but it's cooler today. It's been cooler down here, so it's only about 70 degrees. Now, I wouldn't want to do the same thing, put them in that hot, bright sunlight when it's hot in the summertime because it could scorch them so it all depends on your you know where they are also here's really interesting when it's time for bed it's time for bed and they don't want to have light shining on them 24 by 7. a really good schedule on light is 12 hours and 12 hours so right now they're fairly happy you know the sun starts coming up on the south window out there um, right now, probably eight in the morning or what, I just let them go by the cycle of the window and the sun. So then in the evening, when it starts getting dark, I close the shades and it's, they get a little bit of Christmas lights and the lights from the lamp. And then when I go to bed, they're in the darkness and they seem to be okay with that. So a perfect cycle would be 12 hours on, 12 hours off. If you had like a light, an LED light that you were using, if you didn't have a good south facing window. That's another tip. You can put them on the south window, the east window. Avoid the west windows. They can get really hot. Right now I'm in my different room filming in the west window over there. We've actually got the shade shut because 
I shut that during the afternoon to help preserve because we actually have the air conditioning on most of, more than we do the heat. And it helps preserve um, utilities because it does get pretty warm in the west. You want to avoid the north window because it won't give you enough light for your beautiful little or beautiful orchids, big or little. Um, we talked about the air movement. So, you know, um, you know, your house can get kind of stale in the wintertime, especially for those of y'all up north where you're not keeping your doors open and stuff like I do a lot of the time. And it's cold, right? But your whole house, you and your plants could benefit if you just opened a little window for about five minutes, open the door, crack for about five minutes. I know it's cold. I know it's frigid. I know you're not supposed to do that to let the heat out. But if you do that, get a fan, whatever, to help circulate and get fresh air in and out of the house, you'll do better. Your plants will do better as well. So that's a really important tip. And finally, once your plants have grown for a while, mine actually, this little one, you can see it had two stalks, and that's typical of the fowls. And this part was old, so I cut off the old top of that flower stem that was old and dead like they had, and... It'll seal up and it, you know, it's the same thing as deadheading flowers. You take off any old blooms that are fading. That's what I love about these. I took a few off the white one today, but these are really doing well. And it puts the energy back into the other healthy part of the plant because those old flower stems and flowers are never going to bloom again. You know, you can keep on top of all of this if you just keep an eye on your orchids. Of course, I look at all my plants every day. I've got some cactus, I've got the succulents, I've got begonias and sun patients and poinsettias and Christmas cactus and lots of beautiful flowers. So I'm checking on things anyway because that's my passion. If you're going to get orchids, pay a little bit of extra TLC for them. It'll be worth it. You can wake up to this every day. I hope you guys have a wonderful gardening week. We'll talk soon. So glad that you can join me for these container gardens videos. I'm having such a great time learning about the plants that you grow down here in Southwest Florida. It's a whole different world down here, y'all. Make sure that you watch our videos, subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. I have a blog, mycontainergardens.com. I hope you'll read that too. New content every week. Great tips for you so you can learn, too, how to grow these beautiful plants like these beautiful Phalaenopsis orchids.